Ah, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today I want to go over the opportunity and the type of music that you want to create. And to do that, I'm going to use something called the adoption curve. If you haven't seen this before, I'm going to break it down, what it means, and then go into this whole topic of the type of music you create and the opportunity within it. So of course, let's start with the innovators, and I'm going to use the actual product like the iPhone. For one, innovators are the people who are actually creating this product, right? So the people who are creating the iPhone, they innovate, they are finding new synergies between old technologies and even maybe even creating some new technologies. And then you quickly move into the early adopters. Those are those first people who get on. And just understand that everybody sits on a different place on this curve depending on what the product is, industry, etc. The early adopters are kind of those cool people in whatever that category is that are going to create the wave and create what's cool for the rest of the world. Right after the early adopters, you have the early majority. So the early majority are the people that love the new, but they aren't invested in the new and seeking out the new like the early adopters are. The early adopters have it in their head as a narrative to seek and be associated with that new and cool. The early majority are the people who just like to benefit from the new and cool and they are basically dictating and learning what's cool from the early adopters. Then you have the late majority. These are the people who are now just doing it because everybody else is pretty much doing it. And then after that, you have the laggards. And the laggards are basically the people who are super late to the party. You're basically talking about the people who aren't criminals but are still using flip phones. And now for your type of music and the opportunity in it. Understand that every single genre and every single type of music within those genres, all of the subsets can be placed somewhere along the adoption curve. What the opportunity is in that music, how long you can really benefit from that wave, and how fast you probably need to switch up and start to try to integrate some new things into your type of music. For instance, trap music is somewhere in the early majority and arguably the early part of the late majority. If you think about electronic dance music, it's really in that early adopter region, but what you also have to consider is some of these types of music actually will not go to the peak. There's like an adoption curve within the adoption curve where some things will only get but so high before they cycle out. Then you have Trap Soul, that's a newer form of R&B. That's a little bit more so in that early adopter type side. And then you, of course you have pure pop singing, straight singing R&B or straight singing pop wise, however you want to call it, that's never really going to go out of style, so to speak. But what will drive it is the type of production that it sits on. So if you are a singer, you have a voice, you sing, but the type of production that you use will likely be driven by where that type of sound lies on the adoption curve. So who gets the hugest benefit usually are either the innovators of a sound or subject matter, or at least the people who are the early adopters of using a sound or a subject matter. And what I mean by subject matter? Well, think about Kanye with that whole backpack rapping thing at scale. So people have been talking about some of the more, uh, let's just call it the hipster type vibe thing or conscious type rap and things like that. But Kanye was the one who really was the first to take it into the early majority. Conscious music as we think of it today really hadn't been trending up. It was probably gonna be a smaller adoption curve, but then Kanye blew it up and crossed it over into pop for a period of time. And then you think about Drake. Drake was obviously the first person to popularize the sing-song rap, so he was kind of a late early adopter because people had been doing it for a while, but he moved it into the late majority and, and started to scale it out. If you think about somebody like Jay-Z, he was the first person to really get credit of just talking about hustle music, not gangster music, nothing like that, just hustle. I hustle and talking from the perspective of someone who is out in the game hustling. He was an innovator there and that's why when people wonder why he has so much clout, when you are the first person to bring something to light and push it out on a big scale, just like I said in the video about Bryson Tiller. By coining the term Trap Soul, he positioned himself to make an impact and amplify the credit that he gets. The marketing and psychology behind that is, now that the whole brand is popular, who is the one who popularized that brand? The people who bring something completely new to the game, or at least do it in a new way, are really gonna be the ones who win huge off of it. And by doing that, bringing something new, you aren't at risk at coming in 
in the late majority. If you're coming in and doing trap music and you're a straight trap artist and you aren't bringing anything new to the game, it's gonna take a lot of effort for you to really stand out and you'll never probably get any credit like someone who brought something right into the game. Right, the Migos with that flow, reinventing things. Now so many other people are using it, but everybody knows the Migos are the Migos. I know I do a lot out there for this video, but it's really just to highlight the benefit of creating something completely new or really peeping waves and getting on them early instead of following certain things. Just the fact that you really position yourself to never win big, you have to do more and more work because people are already getting tired of that sound or people already chose uh, who they decide to listen to in that sound. It's like when I want to hear a certain sound, I'm going to go to these three or four people. Anybody else under that? They're recyclable or they're trash. Or even if I like them, I'll listen, but I'm not going to give them anywhere near as much clout as the people who brought it to me in the first place. That's just how the psychology works. That's how the brain operates. Even if Future created the future sound, but I heard designer before I heard future, then in my mind, mentally, I'm gonna be set up to think that future is copying, even if I, I find out that future did it first. And that's why marketing is important when you wanna get credit for the stuff that you create as quickly as possible, because it just leaves room for somebody else to slide in and get the mass attention of the market and everybody will feel like you're copying, or even if they found out you stole it, it's kind of too late. We already feel the way we feel and we like the way we were presented with it first. That's about it. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. And oh yeah, don't forget to share this if you think it was helpful.